Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily and I'm so happy that you are here with me. In today's video, we are going to continue working on the altered Little Golden Book junk journals. These are a couple that I have been working on just recently. And I have, um, this will make a total of six that I've worked on, I know. I'm just loving them and it's something new to me and I, I can't get enough of it. If you are interested in viewing all of the other videos, flip throughs and how I embellish the cover and all, all things about altering a little golden book, I will have a link to the playlist down below. I invite you to go and take a look at those. I've added a few other embellishments to the junk journal covers and to these, I added a little bit of this gold wax to the edges of the front covers just to embellish it a little bit more. I think by doing that, it kind of brings it and ties it all together. And so really, really cute. I love how they are turning out. These, I think these are two of my favorite. You know, I always say that <laughs> as I work on a new journal, I will always say, oh, this is my favorite. And I th they are all my favorite. I think if I didn't love the projects that I work on, um, I wouldn't be creating or making pretty things. And so it makes me really happy that I love my work. So I hope that you enjoy it as well. One of the key features of my altered little golden books, and one thing that I am really proud of, are the spines. If you noticed, I am leaving the golden binding intact. Um, the the little cat the all the cat journal the one on the left hand side that one was a little bit tricky when it came to working on the binding and i do have that video in the playlist and so if you would like to see that um, go take a look some of the little golden books that i've worked on are older than others and are more weathered and so they require special care and without damaging that spine and so there is a little bit of repair work that um, some of them do need, but all of that will be in, in all of the other videos. And so I welcome you and I hope that they are um, inspiring and educational as well. They are also fun. They are fun more than anything. They are fun to create. Okay, so I have already selected um, the ribbons that I'm going to use as a tie for the covers, but I'm not sure how to tie it. I'm undecided if I want to wrap the ribbons around the journals or if I'm going to thread it through the eyelets. I haven't quite made that decision, so I will just leave that uh, for for the very end, either in this video or the final video, which I think this is the second to the last video. And uh, the final one is already in the making and it should be the final flip through. And I, 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 I hope that I've made a decision on the uh, closure with the ribbons. I haven't really said what we're going to talk about in this video. Um, I, I am still working on the journals, but in this video, we are going to focus on little embellishments, specifically charms and beads and little dangles. And so that is what we are going to work on today. I thought it would be fun to bring you along through my thought process so you can see how I make the selection of the beads and the dangles and how I embellish little paper clips and add all of these beautiful little details to the junk journals. I am showing you here how I select the beads I'm going to use in the journal. I take a needle that has a very large eye because it's just easier for me to thread the embroidery floss <laughs> through a large eye opening in the needle. And then I go through my stash of beads and buttons and dangles and charms and I make certain that the needle is going to fit through the hole or the opening of the button or the bead. And that's how I make my selection. <laughs> now off camera, I threaded this needle because I really struggled with it. This one was tough. And in a previous video, I talk about this specific metallic embroidery floss. It is 
a synthetic and it has a metallic fiber. And because of that, the threads fray. They kind of unravel, which makes it difficult to thread through the needle. So off camera, I threaded it just because it was a little bit challenging. But further along in the video, I will show you the technique that I typically use to thread the embroidery floss. And so that'll, that'll be up ahead and uh, it makes it so much easier. But this one, this thread is a little bit unruly. It is beautiful. It has that metallic sheen and I love using it. It just, it just takes a little bit, um, a little more patience <laughs> to work with it. So you could see here how this is a pretty big needle and it is easily threading through the beads and I didn't want to struggle. One thing I did notice is that my selection of beads is not as vast as I thought it was. I'm either missing a ton of beads or in my mind I thought I had a lot more because there were only a few that I could find that would fit through this through the needle and when I'm out shopping or collecting beads and charms and things like that whether it be online craft stores or thrift stores I like using and repurposing broken jewelry or old jewelry I always look for for beads and buttons that have a large opening but I didn't have as many as I thought as many as I thought I did uh, so this morning before I even started working on this voiceover, I spent an hour in my garage going through some of my storage bins looking for other craft items that um, I know I have stored away, hoping that I would find beads, but I didn't come across any today. And it started to get too hot and I was like, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time for this. It's too hot. Let's go inside. But I try to dedicate a little time every morning in the garage and kind of go through, go through my storage bins and uh, so that I can pull things to use or, or just uh, get rid of and put in a donate, a donate pile, a donate bin. Um, I'm not donating a lot of my craft supplies or any. Let me, let me go back. Let me uh, rewind that. Uh, but I do have other things like housewares and home decor that I will be donating. But craft supplies, I pretty much have kept everything that I want to keep and everything that I want to use. But because a lot of it is still in storage, um, I can't believe it's going to be a year since I moved. And a lot of my things are in the storage unit and also in the garage. So it's fun though to go through my things. You know, it's like shopping all over again. And so whenever I feel like, you know, spending money, um, instead of doing that, I just go shop my stash. <laughs> and that makes it fun because some of those items have been neglected or abandoned just because they are stored away. So it's always fun to go through, to go through your stash. And that is my goal to go and shop my stash and use everything I have in all of my projects. Sometimes it's hard because there's not enough hours in the day to make and create all the things I want to do. But I do, I do uh, try to fill in the, the gaps and, and, or my free time with creating. If I'm not busy, or um, being productive in other ways in, in my other work, in my other business, I do spend a lot of time um, creating because I love it. It's fun. That gold button is my favorite. I love it so much that it, it's like a, it's, it's in a heart shaped, I believe. And I can't remember where it came from. I know that I bought them at a craft store and I love it. And I think only two or three, no, I think four, because I think I've used a couple, um, in other projects, but I think I have four left and I use them in these journals. 
but I love them. And these heart-shaped buttons, I just love it. And I know you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing me say how much I love the heart shape, but I really do. <laughs> and even, even if it's buttons or stickers, um, I just I just love it. The heart shape, you guys, makes me so happy. It really does. It brings me joy. And it could be on clothing, on home decor. I just love it. I love it. And I have, um, I think all of my Christmas ornaments are hearts. Different. It's a, my Christmas ornaments are just an eclectic collection of heart shapes. And I love, I love Christmas time because I get to display all of my collection of random heart shapes. <laughs> I love it. I was actually online this morning shopping for more or window shopping because I am trying to I'm tr I'm trying to go no spend on craft supplies um, but it's so hard and I know you can relate to this it is so hard there are so many beautiful things that I've yet to have and so it's always fun to look to see what is out there so I spent some time this morning window shopping for other heart-shaped stickers and I came across some beautiful doodle bug design um, stickers and I, I know I already have some because I've used them in this junk journal but I came across other epoxy stickers and washi tape by doodle bug oh my gosh so cute so I spent some time just adding things to my cart I didn't I didn't <laughs> shop the cart or uh, make a final purchase. They're kind of just living in the cart. Uh, do you do that? I do it all the time. I put things in my cart and I let them live in there for a little bit. And then I'll go back and edit the cart just to kind of sleep on it. So I'm not making, um, I'm not making, um, what is, what is that term? Uh, just, uh, oh my gosh, when you shop without thinking. Yes, I lose the words. I lose the words, but you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, so it'll live in that cart for a little bit and then that way I can really sleep on, sleep on it and then, you know, make a decision after that. But only because I am running low on my doodle bug, doodle bugs, heart stickers. I know I've, I've just used them on everything lately. I love them. And I talked about in a previous video on how there are so many different crafting companies here in the state of Utah, especially the northern part of Utah. And Doodle Bug Designs, their corporate offices are also in Salt Lake City. So, and I know that there are a ton more. Too bad they don't have like a, like a warehouse or a physical uh, store that I could visit and just purchase all of the all of the beautiful Doodle Bug Designs. They are so cute. If you're familiar, you'll know how cute their designs are. And if they do have a local store, oh, I need to know. I need to know. So maybe I'll do, I'll do some more research. Okay. One thing that I want to point out with this embroidery floss is that because they are synthetic fibers and, excuse me, metallic fibers, they will fray at the knots. And so what I'm doing here is I just grabbed a little bit of glue and I'm going to add a little drop of glue in those knots to keep them tight. And I talk about this uh, when I was in the video where I was adding the signatures to the cover on how I had to add drops of glue on the center of the signatures just to keep it from unraveling. And it's just a secure way to keep the beads from falling out. And it has worked. It has been um, several days since I added the beads to the strings. And in fact, I have it here and I am, I'm looking at it and yeah, they're, they are now sealed and it's, it just takes a little drop of glue to keep that not in place and those beads look so cute. I love the way they dangle at the bottom of the journal and I made them long enough so that if you want to 
you can toss them to the top so they can dangle from the top of the journal and not the bottom. But either way, I think they look super, super cute. And my plan was to add a lot more beads to the strings. But I didn't think to, to separate the, the strings to add smaller beads through it. I didn't think to do that. Um, so I had a brain lapse there. I was just one track mind and thought I need to use the entire embroidery floss, thread it through the big needle, and then thread it through the bead. And I didn't think about separating and using some of the smaller beads that I have. But, but now I know that to do that in the future. But regardless, I still think that these buttons and beads turned out so pretty. And that gold, that yellow gold embroidery floss really is beautiful. And it looks great with the, um, the gold plated embellishments that I added, the beads and the buttons and so cute. So, so cute. After all, it is a golden book. And so I wanted to make sure that it all tied in together. In this journal, I did not use the yellow gold metallic embroidery floss. I am using a blue, I think it's an aquamarine blue, and it's a cotton. So this one is easy, so much easier to thread. I do moisten the ends of the embroidery floss, and I'm showing you here how I do that. I just spritz a little bit of water on the ends kind of to seal, to keep them from fraying, and then it easily, easily threads through, through the needle. Because the gold embroidery floss is not cotton, it's a synthetic fiber, it was difficult to keep them, even after I moistened the ends, to keep them together. And so I just had to, I, I almost had to thread one at a time through the eye. <laughs> pull it to pull it all through because they just would not stay together so that's why I say you just have to have a little more patience <laughs> when threading it and you know what duh I didn't think about using oh my gosh you guys brain lapse brain lapse I didn't think about using the little threader thing that comes in the sewing kits to pull the thread through hello oh my gosh can you believe that? <laughs> you guys are probably watching me in the other videos thinking, why don't you use that threader? Oh my gosh. Oh, you see, sometimes I'm just not thinking right. <laughs> my mind is somewhere else. Oh my goodness. Just with that, I need a sip of coffee. <laughs> oh, it's already cooled down, but that's okay. It's all good. It's too hot to be drinking hot coffee anyway. So I'm super, super excited, you guys, that I am almost done with these junk journals. They have been so much fun to work on. I absolutely love how they are turning out. So right now, I am in the process of finishing um, the little embellishments. For example, adding in all of the ephemera and embellishing junk journal cards that I've added in these. And I'm making some envelopes for the front cover and adding envelopes to the back and just, em just em also embellishing the offcuts. And do I do that in this video? I think I do. So towards the end of the video, I do embellish offcuts. So a lot of the pages that I used in these journals are 12 by 12 scrapbooking papers. And so I cut them down to size. The book is eight by six and the pages are eight by five and just a little under six inches, um, just so they could fit within the cover. And so I had a lot of offcuts left over but those are not going to waste. I am keeping them in all of the junk journals and I do embellish some of them 
by adding stickers and phrases to them, but they're not necessarily to be used as journaling cards or little journaling papers. I'm keeping them in there just so that the recipient of the journal can use those little papers to e embellish the, the pages even more or keep it as it is for journaling spots. Um, but I'm keeping them in that way the, the book flows together and the embellishments that you continue to add to your book or to your journal um, kind of match. And I thought that that would be a, a clever use of the offcuts to keep them within the, the journal. So it's matchy matchy. <laughs> but once you get your hands on these journals, you can do, I mean, you can do with all of the embellishments as you wish. You can take all of the embellishments out, including the charms and the, the um, journaling cards. Take all of, those, all of those bits and pieces out. Use them elsewhere in your projects or keep them and use them within this junk journal. It's yours and you can do with it. You know, you can do whatever you like with it. Hopefully you'll keep it and uh, use all of those bits and pieces in the junk journals. They do have a little bit of, um, they're starting to have a little bit of um, alligator mouth. Um, so, and I, I think it's just because the spine is only between one and one and a quarter inches. And because I like to stuff them full of goodies, they do tend to open wide a little bit, but they look so beautiful. I'm holding one right now. Can you hear the little beads in the background? They just look so beautiful sitting here on my desk. And so, yeah, so I'm still, like I mentioned earlier, I'm still undecided as to how to, how to tie the ribbon, if I should wrap it or just do a double bow um, at the end. Either way, I know it's going to look, it's going to look cute. And I, I'm including a generous amount of ribbon in the journals. So they can be trimmed down and you can use the excess ribbon throughout the journal as well. So here I'm still adding all of these beautiful beads and I'm doing a double knot to keep them intact. I did get a few requests that I show more of the process video of how I put things together because I normally tend to go really fast um, my videos tend to be long regardless um, but I like to work somewhat fast I don't know why <laughs> but this one here um, is a slower process video so I hope you are enjoying it and admiring <laughs> the, the work that is being created. These charms are dangles that I'm going to add to the spine of the journal with a hinge clip. These are Tim Holtz hinge clips. I know they have all kinds of other names, but we're going to call them hinge clips because that's what they said on the packaging. And I'm going to take a couple of jump rings and add them to the clip to dangle these charms. Now these heart charms were store-bought. I didn't make these from scratch and I've had them for a little bit and I can't, I can't recall where I purchased them or who made them, but they were on sale and I picked up a whole bunch of them. I just love these so much. The colors are perfect. They are enamel. They almost look like jewelry. They are enamel hearts on a gold-plated backing. There's a large heart and then there's a little heart and it has a little sentiment sentiment that reads, let's see, I can't see on the screen so I'm actually going to grab the book and read it to you. Oh, it reads made with love and it is a little enamel or an epoxy. It's an epoxy charm that's also dangling from the heart. And I'm not worried that the finishes are different. 
So you have the gold plating on the heart charms. And then I believe the jump rings are bronze or a coppery finish. And the hinge clip is also a brushed bronze color. The combining of metals does not phase me at all. Um, I like combining, like for example, silver and jewelry. And on the front cover of these journals, I also combined a lot of different uh, gold finishes. You'll see yellow gold, uh, maybe some rose gold, and a more brushed gold, just different shades. And, and I like the way that looks, the combining of the different metals. And so these charms, I'm doing no different here. To add the jump rings, I just take two pliers that are not going to damage the jump rings and all I do is go in opposite directions with one plier in each hand just to open the jump ring and then thread the charm through it and then the the hinge clip. I was only going to use one jump ring but it didn't dangle um, the way I wanted it to and so I just decided on doing the two jump rings. And then just very carefully, we're going to have the jump ring ends meet again. So we spread them apart and then we bring them closer together. Very gently. It's a pretty soft metal and I'm sure I could have probably done it without the use of the pliers. But the having the pliers is just so much easier. Super cute, and now I'm just going to make a little bit of room and then clip it right in, and it just looks beautiful dangling from the, from the spine. I have used these charms in all of the little golden books that I have made, and I think it looks so cute, and I hope that one day I can come across more of these beautiful charms because I, I only have a couple left now. <laughs> enough for maybe two more junk journals but they are so beautiful it's just jewelry to your junk journal and that green one oh that that lime green color is so pretty it's like a green apple isn't it it's beautiful I think you will love the flip throughs once I get done with these. Oh, so cute. I'm, and I'm only going to do, well, the flip through is only going to um, show these two journals. And the other one that I did, I did uh, the flip through for four journals. And I think that's a lot. <laughs> it made the video really long and I tried to go really quick with the flip through. But I also wanted to, you know... Um, showcase everything throughout so I can't go too fast but maybe in the future I will I will just stick to a single or a double uh, flip through and not go beyond that because then it just takes too long and it kind of takes away from all of the other junk journals so doing the same with these as well And if you wanted to, if you want to have it dangle even more, you can add more chain and more jump rings to have a longer dangle. But I like the way this looks. I like it better than just using the single jump ring. And then just carefully bring that back together. The kit, I bought a fairly inexpensive kit at Michael's a few years back and it it was perfect it is by let me look it up I have it right here it is by bead landing and it comes with it with its own little pouch and I may have shown it in other videos it's a black zipper pouch and in it are four pliers and then I get an all with it which I forget that I could use in my signature binding and then it comes with some long tweezers 
that I also forget to use because <laughs> I, I mainly just use the, the pliers. But it's a nice little kit. And now I've had it for a while back when Michael's was still issuing the 50% off coupon. And I think that's when I bought it. So that is why I have these cute little pliers. Okay, we are now going to embellish these gold plated, well, it's not real gold, but these gold mini paper clips. I love these so much. And this is a newer buy. I was at Target last month sometime and I went into their stationery section and I saw these paper clips. And so, and so I picked them up and I bought them. And now I hadn't been in a Target, I kid you not, maybe three or four years. <laughs> I rarely, rarely go into a Target. But when I was there, I completely forgot at how cute all, the, all, the, all their little embellishments and things are. Oh, speaking of embellishments, did you see these cute little charms? Oh my gosh. That is a little porcelain heart. And then um, the other was a little cat, little cat charm that I had in my stash. And then I'm also using these beautiful glass heart charms. And all I'm doing is threading them through the paper clips. They already have a little jump ring and super easy. And the reason I'm doing it this way is that they can be, so that if you wanted to remove them, they can be removed. You can even add these to a charm bracelet if you want to, but they look so beautiful dangling off of the junk journal. Super easy. Super easy to do this. Any charm. And if you have a charm that doesn't have the jump ring, just add the jump ring and thread it through the paper clip. And that's it. You're done. And then I also found these cute little pom-poms in my stash. I kid you not when I tell you I'm shopping my stash all of my abandoned and neglected goodies that I'm uh, re-familiarizing myself with. I'm looking over my shoulder because I just spotted a little box I want to go through that also has a bunch of little embellishments. You guys, what do you think of the idea of me doing a live? <laughs> what do you think? I have no problem talking. And so I have been considering doing a live and it would have to be in the morning um it's just the best time for me to do it and yeah maybe some ideas on what to do um I don't know I don't know I'm still thinking about it the idea just popped into my head the other day look at how cute those charms look Oh, so cute. Like jewelry. Like if I could clip a paper clip to my, you know, top, <laughs> I probably, I probably would if it would stay in place. So I'm just going to corral them into this lid so that I don't misplace them. And then find, um, find their spots in the journals. Do I add them? I don't remember if I actually go through the journal and add all of the little embellishments, but we'll see. We'll see what I do. I don't remember. Or am I just making a selection? I also have these cute little tassels. Oh, and what I found is that when I was in the garage this morning, I found my pom-pom maker. So I can make pom-poms in all kinds of different sizes. And so I brought that up into my craft area. And so after I'm done with this voiceover, I'm get going to get busy and I'm going to make some, some pom-poms so that I can use as little dangles. So I'm going to make some mini ones. I hope it works out. I hope it, they, they turn out cute. But these little tassels, I love working with tassels. And these were already purchased this way. They already came on their little paper clip. Oh, I do. We do. We do work on the off cuts. These are all of the different off cuts from the 12 by 12 scrapbooking papers. And I folded, I folded them in half to just kind of place over the pages in the journals. And I'm only attaching them with a paper clip so they can be moved to other 
areas of the junk journal or you know used to make other types of embellishments so right now I am just trimming off the branding strip and I will adjust the light in just a moment I am now sitting by a very large window and sometimes I have to make adjustments to the blinds if I don't the the daylight kind of washes out the video so but I do fix it in just a moment so bear with me please so just going through all of the offcuts that are going to go into their corresponding signatures and just trimming off. These are papers that I have purchased from all over the place and also papers that I have had in my stash for a very, very long time. So it's always fun to to be able to use things that we already have just beautiful papers I love I love them all if I didn't love them I wouldn't be using them right right use what you love and then you will love the your finished project if you use things that you have just because you have them and you don't love them you're not gonna love the finished product um, project so don't do it <laughs> Only use designs and colors that you like. Okay, so here we go. I dimmed the blinds a little bit. Oh, woo. Yep. I'm working with it. So this is as best as I could do so that I don't have a washed out screen. These are a lot of different offcuts and they're all so pretty. And do you see how they all they all mesh well together like the color palette the colors they're all you know oh I love this plaid paper just love it my daughter and I were just talking about plaid and she loves plaid and she was looking at designs where whenever she saw plaid she immediately thought Christmas but there are so many plaids that you can use throughout the entire year and this is this is one of them it kind of gives off a spring and a summer vibe it's so pretty and just this this collection of papers works so well together and they all came from different from different brands and different paper pads but they work well together So just tidying up my desk, keeping house so that I can make room for some of the little paper embellishments I'm going to add to these offcuts. I came across this little pouch, which is full of nothing but labels. Also, items that I haven't used in a very, very long time. And I'm going to pull out some labels that I can use on the front of some of these offcuts. So I'm just going to go through it briefly and just kind of make a selection. Well, it's brief on film, but this video was way over an hour. <laughs> so I did edit out a lot of, um, a lot of the video that just shows me thumbing through, thumbing through this, but look at all these cute little labels and some of them, came in ephemera packs others are cut aparts and some of them are store-bought labels just all kinds of random labels like I had forgotten that I had all of these labels again everybody shop your stash but you guys I've moved so many times in the last few years and have packed and unpacked and set up and taken down all of my things so many times in the last few years and guaranteed I'm going to do it again but I've learned a lot as far as packing and organizing I've like become a pro now <laughs> some of these labels are also uh, punch outs punch outs <laughs> punches die cuts so now I'm going to set aside all the ones that I am not going to use. And I happen to have 
two empty baskets. Can you believe that? They had nothing in them. So it worked out perfect. So I will set those aside. And in this little basket, I'm only going to place all of the ones that I want to use. It'll just be easier to sort through those. I may not use all of them, but I will use most of them. And in fact, you notice here there's a pattern going on. I pulled out all of the ones that had gold foil on them. So that was a nice little find because they will be perfect in the gold, in the little golden books, kind of keeping with the theme. If you've seen the flip through of the other little golden, little golden book junk journals, you would have noticed that I used a lot of gold foil ephemera in there. Oh my gosh, it was just so cute. And so I will continue to do the same with these two as well. I am running low. And maybe it's time for me to use my mink and all of the Heidi Swap foil and embellishments and ephemera that I have that I just need to run through the laminating machine. Maybe I need to get busy and start doing some of that. Do you guys want to see a video of me doing that? First, let me practice because I haven't done it in a few years. So I'll practice off camera. And if it's a success, I will record a process video because I am running out of gold foil ephemera. And I still have several more little golden books that I want to continue working on. So I need to get busy with more of the gold foil ephemera. Ooh, I'm, that's, that's a good idea. Yes. So I'm not going to work on all of the offcuts, but I do want to show you a glimpse of how I decorate them. And these can be used as journaling spots. And then I just place them over a page with a paper clip and they look really cute. When layering items like this, the best thing to do is overlap your layers. It just makes it more appealing. Instead of centering every, which you could, you could also center. You know what? You could layer and do whatever you like, but what works for me is, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh my gosh, is overlapping, overlapping the layers just like this. So centering the large label and then overlapping the as you add more, just keep overlapping and it just looks really nice. So now I'm going to take a sentiment and I'm also going to overlap it onto that gold label. And just continue to do that. And it's super easy. You don't have to put too much thought into it. And it looks really cute. Cute and simple. And I'm only going to, in most of these, I only embellish one side. That way you can cut it apart if you want to. Do with it what you may, what you wish. Super, super, super cute. And to show you, I'm just, to show you how I use it in the junk journal, I'm going to grab its corresponding. When I say corresponding, I'm using all of the offcuts in the signatures which they came from. And I'm just, looking for a page to kind of place it over. And that's all that blank page needs. And it's going to look so cute. And I do that to all of the offcuts and I sprinkle them throughout both of the junk journals. And it does, it turns out really, really nice. I don't do it all because I ran out of time. I spent so much time with the beads that I didn't um, have enough time to show you the entire process <laughs> of all of these offcuts, but you get the idea.
And so I will continue off camera working on the rest of them. I know, shame on me for running out of time. That's what a live is for. I think in a live, I can go for hours if I want to. Will you stick around that long? Maybe not, but that's okay. <laughs> something, something to think about. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are off to a great start and that you enjoy the rest of your morning, the rest of your afternoon, and even the rest of your evening. I wish you well. You guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you for subscribing to my channel. And if you are not subscribed, I welcome you and to subscribe and be a part of my channel. Thank you so much for being here. You guys take care. And the next video will be the flip through. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for being here. You guys take care. Bye.